Hello and welcome to yet another of my on the bench videos. This will be a, um, a general video on how to fix a CD player. Say CD player powers up but doesn't do anything. Just some noises come from its mechanism but just doesn't read anything, doesn't respond to any commands. Well, before you even think about doing anything to the electronics, you have to get the mechanics right. And to get the mechanics right, particularly if the C players have been found in some storage shed or somewhere, it hasn't been used for years, you have to do a proper service. For the thing to work, the head has to move, the tray has to move and the clamp has to engage. These are three things that just have to happen. Um, I have removed the tray so you can um, see things and each tray is held inside by some kind of a catch. In this case it was just this catch here which was um, being stopped by this post from coming out so I just bent it a bit and slid out the tray. So now you can see what's going on. Well, three things need to be done. Firstly, you remove old grease. If there's any old grease, that has to be removed. If you haven't got the right grease, don't put just anything. It's better to have no grease than wrong one. A proper grease is this white uh, thing available on eBay for servicing of CD players. Normally you only put them where the metal meets plastic. Other than that, some, there's very often some grease on gears, but this is mainly to make them quieter. But the plastic doesn't need to be lubricated. Second thing is belts. Belts have to be replaced. See, this one's nice and tight. What goes wrong with them? With age, some just, um, they perish and they lose their ability to stretch. They just become hard. Or they go the other way. They just stretch too much and they're no longer grippy. The third stage of that is, and this is what happened here, when the belt becomes that, just becomes a goo. And there's a plenty of that goo all around these gears. And um, as you see, we have here are those uh, cotton buds that are all dirty. And this rug, you know, all that is from cleaning that one single belt. If you have more of them, you have just more work. That took about an hour and a half to clean properly. So once you got those two things, there's a third item, limit switches. Limit switches are normally um, done using micro switches and there are some four different micro switches. There are many different types. In here you can see one here and that tells the servo when a tray goes out. The little tab touches that and you can see on my meter from open circuit it goes to short circuit. That's because the switch has been already cleaned. To clean things you need electronic cleaning solvent of some sort, switch cleaner. Don't use any WD-40s and things like that. Uh, and there's another micro switch which tells the servo when the trace is fully in, it engages that tab there. Okay. But, well, there is sometimes as many as five or six of them. And uh, in here, there are just two. But, um, well, you just have to find them. If, if thing doesn't work, then you have to find some more. Uh, next stage, well, after you've done all that, you have to make sure that the damn thing works and you do that by running the mechanism with your finger. It has to go all the way from um, the head from one end to another. See now it stopped it there. And then a tray has to come out, go back in and the clamp come down on, um, on the CD and engage it properly. Okay, I'll remove that because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see all the belts and things. So, when all that goes and it goes smoothly, you know that the mechanism is 